We'll go on to our next agenda item then tonight, which is the public hearing for a proposed amendment of Title IV, Chapter 6, Section 5 of Moscow City Code, providing for the requirement of bicycle parking for commercial and multifamily residential development. That will be presented by Bill Belknap. Good evening, Madam Mayor and the Council. Um, as you mentioned, the item before you this evening is a, a proposed zoning code amendment to require um, bicycle parking for both uh, commercial uses as well as uh, multifamily residential uses. Uh, to give a little background, um, currently uh, the city does have requirements for the number of uh, motorized vehicle parking stalls that are required for a variety of land uses uh, within the city, but we do not have any standards for the provision of bicycle parking for any development type. Um, the city does have a fairly exceptionally high uh, bicycle use. According to the 2000 census, it was reported that almost 25% of workers either walked, biked, or used other non-vehicular non means to get to work and 3% of the city's total journey to work trips were made by a bicycle. Uh, that does place the city of Moscow within the top 1% of the nation for bike use. Additionally, under the city's 2008 citizen survey, it reported that 10% of respondents uh, regularly biked or walked to school. Uh, I think overall there's a general desire among the city uh, to promote the ability of residents to utilize um, non-motorized means to uh, move throughout the community uh, and that includes, certainly includes bicycles as a means of transportation, improve uh, air quality, uh, reduce congestion and promote active and healthy lifestyles. Uh, there are a couple citations from the comprehensive plan on the topic. Section 364 of the city's comprehensive plan states that the city should develop a bicycle parking requirements for the new multifamily and commercial developments. Uh, implementation Action 31155 uh, also continues to state that the city should improve existing bicycle parking opportunities uh, through the provision of covered bicycle parking and require that future commercial and multiple family residential developments include bike parking facilities. Um, the Transportation Commission really began this effort and over a series of uh, months to years uh, really conducted a lot of research on the topic that began us on this effort. Uh, the Transportation Commission staff reviewed bicycle parking requirements from 13 different communities around uh, the country and including uh, several within the states. We had uh, Boise and Ada County, which isn't on the list here, uh, Coeur d'Alene, Sandpoint, as well as Ashland, Boulder, Chico, Corvallis, Davis, Eugene, uh, Fort Collins, Madison, Missoula, and Palo Alto. Uh, there is a, a compilation of, of, of the bicycle parking requirements of those communities that was included in the packet this evening. On August 26, 2010, uh, the Transportation Commission, after working for several months on a draft ordinance, uh, recommended approval of the ordinance to the Planning Zoning Commission and the City Council. Now, the proposed ordinance would uh, certainly require uh, the provision of bicycle parking for new commercial and multifamily residential developments and uh, also during the change of use and or expansion of that use. It would establish a number of bicycle parking spaces required uh, by land use, uh, much like our motor vehicle parking is. It would establish standards for bicycle parking, including uh, acceptable bicycle rack types, uh, those that support the bicycle in an upright position uh, by a minimum of two positions on the frame, that prevent the wheel of the bicycle from tipping over and that allow uh, the opportunity to uh, lock the frame and uh, one of the wheels or both wheels with a single locking device. It also, um, while we are establishing the standard and, and is our standard in, inverted U or staple type uh, bike rack, uh, we also have provision in there that we, we really don't want to discourage the opportunity to do more artistic or creative bicycle rack opportunities and so that is certainly stated within the ordinance uh, before you this evening. The ordinance also provides guidance regarding location and lighting of bicycle parking areas, uh, generally that to be near entrance areas uh, that are in areas that are visible and lit uh, to discourage theft and vandalism. Uh, and there's a provision in that requires sheltering or covering to accommodate long-term users uh, of 25% of the required bicycle parking for commercial and institutional developments and 50% of the required bar bike parking for multifamily residential uses. It also establishes bike rack spacing standards, so the dimensions for what a bike parking space is to be 24 inches by 72 inches, as well as the spacing of, of bicycle racks, minimum spacing of 48 inches, and the provision of aisles in larger bike pack parking areas where you may have multiple uh, rows of bike racks to allow access uh, by users. 
There's also provisions related to bicycle trailer parking, and while there is no specific standard or requirement for the provision of bicycle trailing trailer parking, it does encourage um, that bike racks may be oriented in a certain manner to accommodate the placement of trailers, especially around uses that um, may have a high trailer, u trailer use, so youth recreation facilities, libraries, um, grocery stores, or others that, that you may see trailers more often. Uh, the ordinance also provides for administrative variances for existing uh, developed sites that allow some deviation from the bike rack spacing and sheltering uh, where the zoning administrator determines that such variances are reasonable and not conflict with the intent and purposes of this code. So it allows some flexibility when we're talking about an existing developed area uh, to be able to try to accommodate the provision of bicycle parking on the property. It also allows the displacement of up to 10% of the required motor vehicle parking spaces to be able to accommodate the provision of the bicycle parking. Um, it also uh, provides an opportunity for phasing of bicycle parking demand um, for particular uses where potentially the bar bike parking demand is uncertain or where there may not be suitable bike access uh, to the development site. Uh, there are a few other points to clarify as well. Uh, the proposed bike parking requirement does not apply to the central business zoning district. So much like uh, the central business district does not require motor vehicle parking and that is provided in a public manner, uh, bicycle parking also would be proposed to be continued to be provided in that same manner. Uh, many of the properties are fully developed or fully built out with structures that would preclude the opportunity of providing bike parking on a private property. And so uh, it was the recommendation of both commissions that that uh, remain in a public fashion. Uh, also, the uh, bike parking doesn't apply to the university-owned or operated facilities. Again, those are facilities that are not subject to the city's uh, zoning code, so it does not apply to those uh, facilities. Uh, shopping malls, centers, and similar facilities uh, generally have a fairly um, complex and sometimes uh, fluid mixture of uses within those structures, and so generally uh, we would work with them on developing uh, a composite parking requirement uh, that will allow them to phase in over time as businesses change and or expand. The, we also received a request um, from Council Member Prestige to provide a compilation, uh, and he provided a list of a variety of uses um, so that we could kind of compare some of the bike parking standards that are in the proposed ordinance to kind of real life uh, businesses that exist within the community. And so hopefully that is legible on the screen and there's copies uh, before you on the dais. Um, so I won't go through all of these, but uh, we had going from Moscow Building Supply to, to Tidy Men's to Rose R's, Tri-State, Walmart's, um, Eastside Marketplace, Winco, and others, um, we com compiled uh, the table here in, the, in what you have before you includes the individual property or business name. Uh, the assumptions in that we had a fairly limited time to, to, to prepare this, uh, we had to make some assumptions on actual square footage and floor area, so we didn't go out and measure in each of these individual businesses. Um, most of these measurements were either based on records that we already had in the office or based on aerial photographs and, and uh, scaling out the size of the, the roof area. And so these are approximations of uh, the square footage uh, we did were able to obtain you know enrollment in students and employees uh, in the junior high and the high school as well as uh, Gritman Medical Center on their their employees and their max day shift and the number of beds they have to be able to compile this uh, so we have the the kind of the assumptions that were given in making these measurements um, the next column over lists the use category uh, the next one indicates the number of bike spaces and then the final column on the right-hand side indicates the required number of, of bicycle racks. And so it's assumed that every bicycle rack can accommodate two um, bicycle parking spaces. If there are any questions, I just maybe to run some to some examples. Um, one of those was a proposed uh, remodel or expanded Walmart uh, that would be expanded to approximately 121,000 square feet. Uh, that'd be a retail establishment of over 25,000 square feet and would have a, a bike parking space requirement of 12 spaces or a total of 12 bicycle racks uh, for that facility. Uh, a couple other examples, um, the East Side Cinemas Movie Theater, which I don't know exactly how many seats are in each theater. I know there are five and we estimated there are 50 seats per theater. Uh, for a total of 250 seats, uh, that would result in a requirement for seven bike parking spaces or four uh, racks. When you get to the junior high and senior high, uh, the, the rack requirements are based upon the number of students and faculty, essentially divided by six. So between those two, on the junior high, we had 564 students, 65 employees. That resulted in 104 
bike parking spaces or a total of 52 racks uh, for the junior high and, and very similar numbers for the high school and we had 53 uh, racks for that particular use. So recommendations this evening of the Planning and Zoning Commission, as I mentioned, conducted the public hearing on this matter on November 10th of last year and recommended approval of the proposed ordinance with the modification to add bike parking requirements for mortuaries. <laughs> that had been one use that we had, uh, staff had removed from the table yeah, so that there would not be a bike parking requirement for mortuaries and the Planning and Zoning Commission felt that it was important to add that back in. So that is does appear in the ordinances before you this evening and that requirement would be one space for every uh, 1,250 square feet of assembly area to minimum. So this evening, uh, staff's recommendation to con conduct the public hearing upon consideration of the testimony received, approve the proposed ordinance under suspension of the rules requiring three complete and separate readings and they be read and published by title only. So with that, I try to answer any questions the council may have. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate your report and your thoroughness. Does the council have any questions of Bill before we open the public hearing? Okay, Walter. <coughs> Uh, Bill, thanks for the time and trouble to, to develop the real life uh, chart of bike requirements under this or bike parking requirements under this uh, as required by the proposed ordinance. It was a little hard to to take the the ordinance and talk where it talked about if 5,000 or 25,000 square feet, 10 plus 1, 400 square feet in excess of 5,000, cha-cha-cha and so forth. And I <laughs> just had, you know, no way I could do that in my head. And I knew that you all had the ability to do it fairly well, fairly quickly. And I do appreciate it. Um, another question I had asked you all was the ability in the proposed ordinance to reduce car parking by, was it 10 percent? Up to 10 percent. For for multifamily uses for existing developments existing development correct okay is there did you do some com computation on the value of that in other words to a to a developer you know cost is lost profit if you're offering them to reduce the number of car spaces by putting in bike parking is there any trade off in money the way you look at it? There may be, depending upon the situation. Um, the way that provision is structured is intended to provide an opportunity. And it started off as, as one stall in the initial draft, and the PNZ recommended that it be uh, changed to a percentage standard. But the intent was to provide an opportunity where you may have a developed site that doesn't have enough area to be able to place bike parking, and, and maybe they wish to do so, that they could displace that, that parking stall and be able to install bike parking in that area. Um, there may not be, depending upon the situation, there may not be a significant cost savings because in, in most instances we're talking about an existing developed parking lot. And so it would be a matter of taking one stall and um, cordoning it off and installing bike racks in that location. Um, if it's a location where there may be re an existing developed site where they are reconstructing the parking lot, uh, traditionally we usually estimate a bike parking or a, a vehicle parking stall as being somewhere around $1,200 to construct. And so if you think about a rack to install maybe in the $150 to $200 for the bicycle rack installation, um, if they did not have to improve that bike parking or if they, were, if they were reconstructing that parking lot and didn't have to pave or improve that vehicle parking stall and instead were installing bike parking there, there may be some potential savings in that instance. Um, but the intent was not to structure it as a, as a cost savings, but as to provide a means to create areas and opportunities for bike parking installation on existing developed areas. And it's not a trade-off in new construction. Correct. If you put in this bike parking, you don't have to put in as many car spaces. That is not the case. Correct. And did I, was there another question I'd ask in my <laughs> email from Saturday night that I don't remember? <laughs> and you do? Let's see if I have the email here. Uh, I, I recall there, there were <laughs> four questions, the, the fourth being the compilation of the numbers, um, the first being the uh, cost issue of the, of the deferral of, of uh, bike parking. Uh, there was a question related to university-related fraternities and sororities. Yeah, would you uh, clarify that? I understand it now because you t I talked to you this afternoon. Would you make that clear? Uh, facilities that are owned and operated as university facilities, so a good example might be the sub or the Kibbe Dome or the, or the 
um, student rec center or other facilities are do not are not subject to the city's zoning code or standards. Uh, it is not necessarily a function of the university zoning district um, that excludes their regulation, but it's more of the form of government and state and the city's relationship. The um, but we do regulate the private uses on university grounds. So if it's a where we most commonly see this might be sororities, fraternities that are private fraternities and sororities that may be constructing a building or doing a renovation on university-owned property. The property may be zoned university, but it's a private entity that is that is conducting the use on that property, so they are subject to our zoning codes and standards. Um, so, so fraternities and sororities on a university-owned and university-zoned parcel uh, is still subject to the provisions of this section. And so we did have an example, uh, Sigma Chi was the fraternity identified. It, it could be any uh, fraternity or sorority. And uh, the parking requirement, assuming 60 occupants, was uh, 12 bike parking spaces or six racks for that particular use. Those are the ones I recall. And if I get back to my desk and look at the email and I find another one, I'll respond to it. OK, thank you. Walter, would you like to look at your email look at my before? <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't bring I didn't bring mine with me, so. it's. I can get off my laptop over there when I get Pass this down there just so Walter can glimpse at it again there and see. And you've answered the question about malls and the businesses within them, so you've covered them all. Thank okay. you, Bill. You're welcome. Thank you. Others with questions for Bill? Okay.